Now, people who say that they sat down and chose the date of Christmas as 25th, let me give you another bombshell that will shake the foundations of your knowledge today. Christmas was not just chosen on the 25th. There was a reason, not only because the sun god Mithra was, was, was born on the 25th of December. Do you know that there are at least about 10 to 15 other sun gods that share the same birthday where they put your Jesus? <laughs> Do you know there are other sun gods that have their birthday and you know their names? I will give you the names. These are names you know, but you didn't know. They have the same birthday. So what these demonic people did was that they took the, 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 the Jesus Christ. They believed that Jesus Christ and Christianity derived out of all these pagan origins. Because, and I'm going to prove it to you. They say that all the story we tell about coming of Christ and born of a virgin, that is something that has happened before. So Jesus cannot be any special person. He has to be one of the sun gods that we have. They call Jesus Christ a sun god and they put him in the middle, the same place where all the sun gods have their birthday, they squeeze him there. That's why when they draw Jesus, you find out that they put a halo sign over his head. You know what is hello sign? H-A-L-O, hello sign. They put that hello when they draw Jesus and there's something like a sun, this thing around his head. That is how you know a sun god. It is on the head of Buddha. It is on the head of Krishna. But let me give you the names of all the sun gods who share birthdays on the 25th of December. So that you know the insult. And you know why many people have left Christianity. And we didn't even know that. Number one, Hermes, a Greek god. He was born December 25th, 200 BC. Second one is Dionysus, Greece, December 25th, 300 BC. The other one is Zarathustra, Greece, December 25th, 100 BC. The next one is Adonis, Phoenician, December 25th, 200 BC. Now, the more popular one is Krishna. Krishna was born where? In India. When? He was born on December 25th, 900 BC. What about Mithra, the one that we already read about, was born in Persia and born on December 25th, 600 BC. So what about Horus? You know about Horus? Isis, Horus, and the rest of them, Osiris. Now, Horus was born in Egypt. He was born on December 25th, 3000 BC. December 25th, these are names you know. What about Buddha? Buddha was born in Nepal on December 25th, 563 BC. What about Bedo? Bedo was God of Orion, born on 1027 BC. Now we have other Quazeli, you have Hercules, you have Atis, or you have Tammuz, you have Osiris. All of them were born on December 25th, 400 BC, 300 BC, and the rest of them. All these gods were born that time, before that period. Now, how do you explain the fact that they carried Jesus Christ when they made, uh, there's a diagram I saw, they put the, all the gods and lined them up one by one and put Jesus in the middle. All of them had their halo sign and they put also a halo sign in front. That's why when they look at you, they, okay, I'm going to tell you, let me show you how, they, why they tell you that your story as a Christian is concocted, that you stole the story of what happens in paganism, that Christianity is not real. So let me tell you a little background of all the gods who were born in December 25th. So I want to run quickly, you know, so that we don't waste too much time. Now, the number one is Krishna. Krishna was born in India, born on December 25th, 900 BC. His mother was a virgin. Are you listening to me, please? Are you paying attention to me? His mother was a virgin. Mother's name was Maya. The name Krishna means black or dark. His uncle, Kamsa, the ruler at the time of his birth, sought to kill Krishna because he had heard a prophecy that Krishna would overthrow him. I will stop there. Let's go down to Perth. Uh, Mithra. Mithra was born of Persia December 25 to 600 BC. His birth was witnessed by shepherds that brought gifts to him. Are you listening? Are you listening? The song God that they celebrate his birthday on December 25th, the main one. He said his birth was witnessed by shepherds that brought gifts to him, to give to honor him. He was tired he was tied as a mediator between God and man. Is he resembling something you know? Now, witness this quote from the Encyclopedia Encounter. Mithraism was, look, look at this quote. He said, Mithraism was similar to Christianity in many respects. For example, in the ideals of humility and brotherly love and baptism, the rites of communion, the use of holy water. Are you listening? The use of holy water, the adoration of the shepherds at Mithra's birth. 
the adoption of Sunday and of judgment and the resurrection. This is the Mithra they sell. They, they see, you see the kind of things. I'm not done. Let's go to Horus. Horus was born in Egypt. Let, what is his background? His brother said his mother was Isis. His mother, Isis, gave birth to him in the swamp. She was warned by the god Thoth to flee and conceal the child from the evil Seth. Seth had killed the father of Horus, whose name was Osiris, and sought to kill Horus. Also, Isis was able to keep Horus hidden from Seth till he, Horus, grew to manhood. There's a movie called The Gods of Egypt. So let's go back. You see, are you seeing resemblances? Now, this is Buddha. So what is it about Buddha? I say Buddha's name, the, for Buddha, his mother's name was Maya, similar to Mary. Are you hearing me, please, people? Are you hearing me? He said Buddha's mother's name was what? Maya. He says similar to Mary. She was a virgin. He was immaculately conceived. And at birth, he announced that he was a savior to the world. His birth was announced by a star. At his birth, he was visited by wise men who declared that they had seen a sign of his birth. That is to say, signs of the royal birth. Coincidence? Coincidence? Are you hearing it? They said you borrowed your Christian story from here. Let's go down, all the way down. All of them are born of virgins, they claim. So let me go down, down to Osiris now. Let's go down to Osiris. Please pay attention. Don't let anybody distract you. Osiris was born in Egypt before 2500 BC. Now, he came to fulfill the law called KRST, the anointed one, born of a virgin, of the virgin, Isis, Mary, okay, on December 25th in a cave in a manger, okay? Now, this is, people, this is the record of Osiris. With his birth announced by by a star and attended by three wise men this is osiris earthly father named seb translates to joseph at age 12 he was a child teacher in the temple and at 30 he was baptized having disappeared for 18 years osiris was baptized in the river larutana the river jordan by enop the baptizer who was beheaded are you seeing is there any difference between what i'm reading and what you know about jesus so these people believe that since all these are our sun gods, they have similarities and they share the same birthday. Who is this Christ that will come and have a separate? Let's take him, squeeze him and put him there. So to see the impact of this that they have done, this is why many people have left Christianity, thinking that Christianity is fake. Look at, there's a right up here. He said, many characteristics of Jesus which Christians today believe in are understandably similar or identical to religious trends and beliefs that preceded Christianity. Are you hearing that? There are tens of accounts of pagan gods of many different cultures who were said to have the same attributes as those that Christians claim Jesus had. Claim! Now, Trinity, Trinities were popular in pagan sects before Christianity was introduced to the world. Some of the more well-known Trinity gods included Mithra, Vohu, Manarashnu, Amen, Mut, Konsu, and Osiris, Isis, and Horus. You see, they believe that you are just the same thing with them. You shouldn't, you talk about virgin birth, they'll give you all these people that are, but okay, look at all the gods that they say they, their parents were virgin. Let me read them for you, please, as we round up. You say Romulus, number one, Ramus, Zoroaster, Buddha, Mithras, Krishna, Osiris, Ion, Agdist, Atis, Tammuz, Adonis, Koribas, Pesos, and Dionysus. All these gods, their births were of virgin, virgin births. That's why they took the date of December 25th. Can you imagine this? All these gods, they are sharing the same birthday. They are celebrating the same birthday. So the Buddhists, the Krishnas, the Hare Krishna people, they are having the same Christmas celebration which the witches are having. So if Christmas is such a beer, why will the witches be celebrating your Christmas? Look at all the people who have Christmas with you. And nobody puts it in the media. They won't tell you. That's why they chose December 25th. Let's go down to who is Father Christmas. During the Christmas celebration, please, I don't want to tell you to swear, 
But be honest with me. Who is always more popular whenever there is Christmas celebration? You go to homes of Christians and what you see is for the Christmas image is either they are wearing his hat or they have him standing up or they have the pine trees and all the amulets and charms that signify charms and amulets in the old where they hang on the tree. They don't even know what they are hanging. They don't know what they are doing. They just put it there. For that Christmas is everywhere. Ask any child what they remember about Christmas. They will tell you for that Christmas. So, is Christmas now about Jesus and yet it is for the Christmas that it reminds people? Year in, year out, when Christmas shows up, all you see in the media is for the Christmas. All you see at homes for the Christmas. In Christian homes, for the Christmas. Who is this for the Christmas? The Old Norse text, Odin, is depicted as one-eyed and long-bearded, frequently wielding a spear named Gunnil and wearing a cloak and a, a broad hat. He is often accompanied by his animal companions and familiars, the wolves, Gary and Freki, and the ravens, Hugin and Menin, who bring him information from all over Migdad and rides the flying eight-legged steed slip nail across the sky you know i'm going to tell you something that will shock you today you know that every time you see father christmas you see that they put him he's he's been drawn in the sky they put moon in the background and you see him in the sky riding imagine where where someone is riding in the sky and you don't see the magic of that he's riding and he's flying and these are animals that should be on the ground but they're he's riding he started first of all with with eight-legged Slip nail, eight legged horse, white horse, and eventually it moved now to reindeer. And you see them on the sky, and he's carrying gifts that he wants to go and give to children. So let me go down right now and read you the history of how that transitioned. Here's a look at how Santa Claus emerged from the lands of the Vikings. You know, Vikings exchanging the Norse god Odin's more terrifying traits for those of a plump, chucking mm, man of eternally good nature. Odin. Remember I told you about Odin, the one that they named Wednesday after him, the chief of all the gods. That is the person who is the Father Christmas, but I don't want to just say it like that. Let's just read it so I can prove it to you, okay? That is the Father Christmas. Now, Odin was chief among the Norse pagan deities. We still remember him in the day of the week named after him, which is Wednesday, Woden's Day. He was spiritual, wise, and capricious. In centuries past, when the midwinter youth celebration was in full swing, Odin was both a terrifying specter an anxiously awaited gift bringer he brings a lot of gifts soaring through the skies on his flying eight-legged white horse which is called slip near okay back in the day of the vikings yule y-u-l-e yule was the time around the winter solstice on december 21 gods and ghosts went soaring above the rooftops of the wide ride the dreaded oscoria one of odin's many names was Junil, which is master of yule or father of yule so if yule was christmas and you have a one somebody whose name is father of yule what does that mean father christmas <laughs> check his name he has more than a hundred names odin one of his names go look it up don't take my word for it one of his names is father of yule or master of yule which is father of christmas okay so let's let me rush this so centuries have passed and the world was changing paganism was being replaced with christianity blah 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 now the first thing they did was and they now said when they have uh, constantine has already changed everything and said we are making this our state religion christianity you know what they now did they said no since we, we are now making christianity our state religion that we're adopting let us remove that odin image let's not mention his name let's give him a different name altogether guess what they did they went and renamed him saint nicholas they say saint nicholas is the one who brings gifts and everything so from that moment on everybody starts seeing for the christmas as saint nicholas until when the catholic church banned everything that has to do with nicholas i think it was 1960 something or even before then they banned everything about, about nicholas was cut off because people were attributing too much power and glory to him they they, they started seeing like he was was God and even the, the, the worshippers were seen as outcasts so they banned everything about Nicholas and the next thing they happened they had to straight you see transition has happened from Odin raw Odin straight down to Saint Nicholas from Saint Nicholas now that is banned what else are they going to come up the Germanic people came up with what they call the Sinta class S-I-N-T-E-R then K-L-A-S-S -S. 
after the reformation nick and other saints became forgotten in all the protestant countries of europe except holland now then he moved into Santa class s-i-n-t-e-r and then k-l-a-a-s Santa class that's german a kind and wise old man with a white beard white dress and red cloak and he'd ride the skies and roofs of the houses of the eight-legged white horse delivering gifts through the chimney you know, now, if you know anything about, about Santa Claus, those of you in America and school, it's expected that he comes down through the chimney. Chimney will lead you to the fireplace. And remember that for the whole days that they are doing Saturnalia, that they take what they call the Yule log. Y-U-L log is L-O-G. And they put it in the fireplace and they burn it for 12 days, signifying the actual human sacrifices that is taking place, which they are making to the god Thor. Thor is the one they named Thursday after and is the son of Woden, which is Wednesday or Odin. So, but when he comes, why did he choose fireplace? Because that's where they make the sacrifices to him. He comes through the fireplace. Now, let's read on. Let's, let's read on. Delivering gifts through the chimney to well-behaved children on his birthday, December 6th. December 6th is his birthday, and that is also St. Nicholas's Day. Are you seeing the evil that these people did? Deceiving and covering our eyes, and we're also believing it. 17th century Dutch immigrants brought their tradition of Santa class to America. And his name instantly changed from Santa Claus to Santa Claus. The Santa Claus you have today was given to it in the United States of America. The Dutch carried Santa Claus. America gave it Santa Claus and recluded it. Now, Santa Claus, a pot belly jolly man with a white beard, wearing a coat, carrying a bag full of gifts for children. This image became popular in the U.S. in the 19th century after the publication of poem A Visit from St. Nicholas by Clement C. Moore. The eight-legged horse was replaced for eight flying reindeer. Santa's image got more popular through advertisement for Coca-Cola in the 1930s. It was Coca-Cola who made Santa more popular in the 1930s. Where he's carrying a child and drinking coke. He's always carrying children. I'm going to prove to you today that the same Santa you're looking at is the same God, Molech, that they were sacrificing children to in the Bible days. That's why he's always carrying children. That's why in 12 days of Christmas, the child is saying, my lover brought to me. My lover. Who is your lover? Santa. But before we get there, I'm going to show you the meaning of Santa. Let's go down. Let's go down. In steps of Yule Goat, the giver of gifts until the 19th century, a popular theory is that the celebration of the goat is concerned to worship of the Norse god Thor, who rode the sky in a chariot drawn by... This is the Thor is the son of who? Of Woden, of this Odin. So the goat that you see people putting on Christmas is a way of commemorating the fact that he, was, he himself was riding like his father on the skies, but it was two goats that drew him. So we commemorate God's pagan gods. And we do these things without any trace to any biblical story anywhere. And we don't care. And these things we are doing have history here in paganism. And they still celebrate it tomorrow. In Langer's Encyclopedia of World History, this is what is written there in one of the excerpts, okay? He said, the fire god who came down the chimneys of the ancient pagans is the same fire god to whom infants were burned in human sacrifice. Make reference to Leviticus chapter 18 verse 21, please. Leviticus 18 21, you shall not give any of your offspring to offer them to Malek, nor shall you profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. This is the same God now as we are moving further down i'm almost rounding up there is something that is called anagram okay when something is done anagrammatically it's like if i write joseph i'll tell you to switch the words around and form something so even if i want to curse somebody now i can use one word that of a curse I, if i want to tell somebody idiot okay i can change it to something familiar with the same letters that make up the idiot and I'll put it, and the person will see it. The person is being cursed with that idiot, but the person doesn't know that I'm cursing them. But the curse is on them. Their spirit is seeing that I'm cursing them, but they don't consciously know that I'm cursing them. 
So that is called anagram. You can change the words around, okay? So we're going to look at anagram. Anagram started back in the days. It began with a Jewish occult uh, book called the Kabbalah. Um, so many of you know about Kabbalah. This is what uh, uh, this woman in Hollywood practices. So Kabbalah, that's where it started from. But let's go straight to where it concerns us right now. In anagrammatic arrangement, we are going to look at, first of all, before we go into the anagrammatic arrangement of Santa Claus, let me tell you the code word that is used for Lucifer in, in the New Age movement. Many of you don't know, there's a woman called Elena Bavaski. Elena Bavaski is probably the female version of Aleister Crowley because they call Aleister Crowley as the wickedest man that ever walked the surface of this earth. Bavaski is like... Uh, the female version of Alistair Crowley. But then she had a prodigy called Alice Bailey. Alice Bailey was a prodigy of Bavaski, okay? And Alice Bailey was the woman, I want everybody to pay attention, please. Alice Bailey was the woman who founded what we call the Lucifer Trust. It's a publishing company that is currently in the United Nations as one of the most important organs in the United Nations. They just don't do only publishing. They are into policy making, all kinds of stuff. With the UN, Lucifer Trust. So by 1924, people were raising eyebrows and getting talking, what, what is this? How can you take it out? Call it Lucifer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they quickly went and changed it and called it the Lucis Trust or Lucis. L-U-C-I-S. Lucis Trust. Now you're asking yourself, why did they remove from Lucifer and call it Lucis? Now, there are two code words that they used to refer to uh, Lucifer in the New Age. They are code words, so they are not known to everybody. The two code words that you can call and you know that you're also calling Lucifer is Lucas, L-U-C-A-S, Lucas and Lucis, L-U-C-I-S. Every time you hear L-U-C-A-S or L-U-C-I-S, you are calling Lucifer. Lucas and Lucis, they are all Lucifer. That's why they removed from Lucifer that everybody was aware of and moved to Lucis. So if Lucas is also Lucifer, what is Santa Claus? Can somebody out there listening to me do an anagrammatic arrangement of Santa Claus for me, please? I, this is class work now. Do anagrammatically. What is Santa? Let's start with Santa. How do you rearrange Santa? What do you get when you rearrange Santa? S-A-N-T-A. -A. What do you get? Instantly. What do you get? You get Satan. It, does, that, does that work like that on your paper? Are you doing it? And a grammatic rearrangement of Santa is what? Satan. What about Claus? C-L-A-U-S. Santa Claus. What is the anagrammatic arrangement of Claus? What is it? What does he give you? He gives you what? Lucas. So Santa Claus anagrammatically arranged. What do you get? You get Satan and Lucas. One and the same. Satan, Lucifer. One and the same. I am giving you life today because my father gave me the power to give you life. I don't have it. He put it in me. This has been one of the toughest journeys I've ever had to embark on in my entire life. I am giving you life, free. People pay thousands of dollars to get the information I'm sharing with you free today. Satan Lucas, the same God to which they offered children. That's why he's always in love with children. And I'm going to read you the lyrics of Marilyn Manson's song called Saturnalia. That's what we're going to end with. Saturnalia. I will show you the lyrics, what he wrote in the song. I will show you the lyrics. You need to say it as we are closing now. Okay? Because I'm about to close. But before I close, I went to a website where they give advices to witches and pagans on how to conduct their Christmas. And I want you to take your pen and your paper by your side. Please get ready to write. This is the instruction they gave them. It's called the symbols of winter. Now, he said, Yule is a Sabbath. This is from their, their own Wiccan website, oh, please. Their website. He said, Yule is a Sabbath that reflects the return of the sun. So, add, he's giving them instruction on how to do it. So, add solar symbols to your altar. Because they, they do what they call Yule altar. You can also Google it. Yule altar. Y-U-L-E and then altar is A-L-T-A-R. 
You can Google it so you will see how their own altar looks, whether it's different from the one you make in your home as a Christian. Mm -hmm. So this is the instruction. They say, Yule is a Sabbath that reflects the return of the sun. So add solar symbols to your altar. Gold discs, yellow candles, anything bright and shiny can represent the sun. Some people even get a large pillar candle. Inscribe it with solar symbols and designate it as their sun candle. You can also add evergreen bars, sprigs of holly, pine cones, a yule log, and even Santa Claus. This is on their website. And even Santa Claus put it on your altar. They are telling the witches. The same that you put in your home. It is here. The thing is here. It says, consider antlers or reindeer along with other symbols of fertility. Or even Santa Claus put on your altar. When you Google your altar, you will see some of them have Santa Claus standing there. Try incorporating sacred plants. Sacred plants. Let's look at the sacred plants, please. Again, sacred plants associated with the winter solstice. As well, evergreen bulbs like pines, fir, juniper, and cedar are all part of the evergreen family. And they are typically associated with themes of protection and prosperity, as well as that of continuation of life and renewal. You say, hang a spring of holly. Hang a spring of holly, holly again, in your house to ensure good luck and safety to your family. Do you see the kind of witchcraft that you practice at home? Say you are celebrating Christmas. You say, wear it as a charm. Wear it as a charm or make holy water. Let me give you the history of holy water today. Nobody has ever told you this before in life. Watch. Let me show you where holy water came from. It's witchcraft. Watch. Watch it here. He said, hang the sprig of holly in your house to ensure good luck and safety to your family. Wear it as a charm or make holly, holly, H-O-L-L-Y, holly water, which you probably read as holy water, H-O-L-Y, water. So, is this coincidence? Let's see what he's talking about. He said, by soaking the leaves overnight, by soaking holly leaves overnight in spring water under a full moon. How do they make holy water? They take the holly leaves, holly, H-O-L-L-Y, the leaves of holly, they take it and soak it overnight in spring water. And when the day break, you have what you call holy water. That is a famous pagan practice that went into the church. No wonder we start seeing holy water in the Catholic church. And then from there, it has gone even to into Pentecostal churches. I didn't even know before. I told you anywhere knowledge runs to, I pursue knowledge. I am Alice and knowledge is that thing that is running into the wonderland and I'm pursuing it down to the wonderland. I don't care if it is where the devil lives, I'm going there. I chase after knowledge. Because the truth, God, of all the things that will make God's people perish, God said it's only lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. For this, my people perished during the time of Noah. For this, they perished during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. Lack of knowledge. Not that they couldn't pray, not that they couldn't do all those religious things. Lack of knowledge. Going down. I'm finishing now. He said, use birch branches to craft your own besom for magical workings. And in spells and rituals related to enchantments, renewal, purification, fresh, blah, blah, blah. Now I said there's no limit to the number of things you can put on your Yule altar. As long as you've got the space, consider some of these items as part of your Sabbath decor. Look at the items, fruits and nuts. Add bowls of winter nuts like walnuts, pecans and hazelnuts or fresh fruit such as oranges and apples to your altar. Mistletoe, which symbolizes fertility and abundance, is often associated with the winter holidays around the world. Snowflakes, icicles or even a bowl of snow can come in handy for wintertime magic. Candy canes, although they're typically associated with the Christmas holiday, candy canes can be utilized in magic as a way to direct energy. 
bells are often included in pagan practice as a way of driving away evil spirits but you can also use them as a method of bringing harmony to a magical space bells and you have them on your trees sun wheels and other solar symbols are a great way to establish a connection to the sun as it begins its long journey back to earth so the sun they are celebrating is the sun that god created not the s-o-n that god gave birth to it is not the begotten son of god it is the created s-u-n of the small g god this is what the people are celebrating and they have compelled you to celebrate with them they changed the day of worship. They changed the, his birthday and they imposed it on you and you accepted it. No questions. And when somebody wants to explain, you say, hey, don't talk about it. Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 3 to 4, it says, For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workman with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. Is that not what your Christmas tree? They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. This is your Christmas tree. And God said, these things, he said, I do not like these things. Stay away from these things. That's your Christmas. It's Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 3 to 4. Go read it through and see for yourself. Praise God. Go read it through. So now, in the end, I'm going to end here with the song. There's a song called Saturnalia, which is performed by Marilyn Manson, a foremost Satanist. The lyrics of his song... He came down, I'm going to rush down the lyrics. He said, when all your demons die, even if just one survives, I will still be here to hold you. No matter how cold you are, no matter how cold you are, I see the terror in your teardrop. Take your belief, make it snow, let go, and wait together until we thaw. I don't want to be another bullet hole in the exit sign on your road. I don't want to be another bullet hole in the exit sign of on your road. Just smile like a rifle, hard metal in the setting sun. Just smile like a rifle, hard metal in the setting sun. I was invited, listen to this. I was invited to eat the young. He said it twice. I was invited to eat the young. I was invited to eat the young. This is Saturnalia. He was invited to do what to eat the young. They sacrificed, they sacrificed, and they sacrificed. That's why children, when they come, they will go and pack their, their shoes and fill it with straws. Straws that his, 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 his flying goat. That's when you see that tradition, where do you think he came from? His flying horse that, that Odin was using to fly. The children used to take their shoes and put it under and then put straws for the, 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 the horse to eat when it comes. Then Odin will come in through the chimney and then come and, and drop gifts for them and go away. Now they use reindeer for it. Everything about paganism starting from October 31. Check it out. Going down all the way. 12 days of Christmas. 12 days of Christmas. Now, I want you to write this thing down and Google it, please. T-R-O-L-L. -L. What is the meaning of troll? There's a Christmas song that is called Deck the Halls. Deck the Halls with boughs of holly. Inside that song, you're going to see something that has to do with troll. Go and find out the meaning of troll. T-R-O-L-L. -L, troll. And they even put Yulatide in there. My beloved ones, after all this, after all this, how can you tell me that it is not needful for us to enlighten ourselves and tell ourselves the truth? That Jesus Christ, my own, you call me Jesus baby, don't you? I'm a Jesus baby. My own daddy does not have anything whatsoever to do with a day that Krishna and Buddha and all these people celebrate their birthdays. Jesus stands out. That's why so many pagans I've met in America, they always tell me that, come on, man, this your Christianity just came from paganism. It's the same thing. They went and changed all their stories to look like that of Jesus. And they say that they are all the same, that we even borrowed the whole virgin birth and the whole resurrection thing, that we borrowed it from them. We did not borrow from them. It's a lie. That's why they put us on the same place where they have their birthday, so that we cannot deny it. That's why they put a hollow sun sign above his head, so that you cannot also deny that. Is that my Jesus or your Jesus? That's not my Jesus. 
He's not a son God. He is the son, S-O-N of God. He's not the S-U-N God. He is the S-O-N of God. The only begotten son of the most high God. He has absolutely nothing to do with the pagan worship and pagan sacrifices of Christmas. Something that was banned until the 19th century. Is Jesus born 19th century? If Christmas was about Jesus, why is it that it was only accepted just in the 19th century? Why can't we use our brains? What has happened? Is it too much TV or too much social media or what? What has happened to us? Father God, deliver your people. What is going on? You see Christians carrying Bibles. Not, in fact, they don't even carry the Bibles anymore these days. That's why you can't engage in any intelligent discussion with an unbeliever. When you see them, you keep running. Because you don't research, you don't read, you don't search, you don't do nothing. Anybody who wants to have an intelligent discussion, you don't, don't leave it, leave it, that's how it is. Don't, don't, nobody thinks that's how it is. The children you're giving birth to today are going into a computer age. Everything is smart now. They want to know. Now you tell them, oh, that's how it is. That's how it is. Don't worry. That's how it is. It doesn't matter. I won't do that's how it is. I will research. I will get knowledge. And I will pass it across to the generation after me. I will make sure that anyone who encounters me, that they encounter knowledge and that they encounter truth by every means possible. I submit to you today that my Lord and King Jesus Christ the one I love and love to death and love with all my heart and everything I stand for. That he is not, he was not born on Christmas. Has nothing to do with Christmas. And that no true Christian or Christians came together to choose Christmas. The pagans who were in charge, who killed our brothers and sisters, who observed Saturday. Our brothers and sisters were observing Saturday Sabbath. The same pagans who killed them camouflaged and came because they wanted to set a precedence of disobedience. They wanted to set a culture, create a culture of disobedience that will outlive them so that we will make it a it will become a part of us like I was saying earlier an ancestral curse you don't even know about it it happened many generations back but it has become a part of you so they created that culture and that culture now has become a part of us so when you tell someone no this is not right oh come on stop my four, 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 four fathers did it how are you who are you to come and change it that is how God ended up with one one families Noah Lot is the truth but he said this time i am done i'm tired i don't want to end up with one family obedience they say is better than sacrifice let's be obedient thank you so much god bless you i wish i could spend some more time but i don't want to wear you out but god bless you thank you for being a part of this i i really look forward to this i can't believe how god has helped me to get here and like i said the attacks have been very enormous it shows how important this program was to God. And thank God he made it happen. I'm so happy, so grateful. And as always, I love you guys. God bless you. Thank you so much. And have a blessed, blessed day, night, morning, wherever you are. In Jesus' name, amen.